You don't have to move since you won the, you won the seat up here all set. Right. Well, I think he'll be mad at me, not you, because that's the problem. <laughs> Can't be okay. That's where he was the last time. I, you know, I actually went over there because of the art galleries over there, right? Yeah. So, and uh, uh, I was just up and see it, but I ran out of time. I got my phone yeah. and I said, well, I just finished the build out, so yeah. wait for the furniture to be delivered. And, uh, yeah, it's going good. Did you get any bites out of that? Um, yes, I have, uh, I think I've got seven showings, and I've gone down to two interesting. Uh, it was really interesting. Plus, we're doing the Chamber of Commerce after hours. Right. So on the 16th of November, I'm going to go to a party there so you can see it. You haven't seen it already. Oh, I've been there. Yeah, yeah, it's a good table. Really? Yeah, we went many years ago. It's, be, it's probably going to be an institution. Yeah. I'm talking about the Danforth. The Danforth Inn. Yeah. I listed that properly. Did you? Yeah. It's been a very interesting process to see who's out there interested. It's too big for residents. Yeah. You know, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, it's worth it. That's a show. It's a big portion of the goodwill. So. Well, yeah, there's a piece of it that has to be done there. But it's also in an overlay zone, so there's two extra building ones with it. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, so there's these microphones. Does it, yeah, where, where is the damn building? It's next Mics are always on. No. Irish Church. They're on now, though. St. Thomas on Church. Yep. It's on that block. Yep. No. But we're doing the Chamber of Commerce after hours. We're having the coffee party there. Off. Is it nice? It's very beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it's just done. This woman has done a fabulous job. Oh, it is beautiful. Her, her husband is uh, Ron Ward at uh, Drummond Woodson. Uh -huh. He's a commercial guy. Yeah. Yeah, I so. yeah, know. Uh, yeah, interesting. But anyway, so how my buddies are the dogs? So that's when I said that to your, your partner and I made the comments as well, have him send me a 5,000 check. Yeah. It turns out now we've spent something like 7,000 on the place. for that place. Just the So Jeff becomes the owner. Good luck. I know, you're going to call me first because I've already done the due diligence. Try to buy O'Donnell's the nursery. You did? They were the brokers. What you do? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> You're really pushing nice. It's it's retail. It's you know it's a pot on my back. It's good business. It's a great business. Congratulations. That's great. You get some jobs. They also have a business card. Yep. And um, it just wasn't that much more. Just takes it to fit. First of all, I don't know. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> hey, that's good. Much better for you. Good job. Much better. You're sick? I uh, broke 10 ribs. Eight weeks, seven weeks ago. How'd you do that? I was flying off my bike. Yeah, one. You know, so many people that have crashed the bike. Hospital's attended. Really? So, how did you cut you off or something? So anyway, we're just, we're just catching up on a couple of business deals I was trying to do with Ross. I'm just trying to get a lawyer. I was going to know the lawyer spoke for something I did. <laughs> to which I opened the mail with another bill. It doesn't, it doesn't have a problem with billing. You know, at least, what do you guys say? Six or seven people that passed the shit litigation. He's a kid who the court. Yeah, you know. He's a marketer. Commercial. Intellectual property mostly. I do a lot of marketing too. Technology, litigation. A good buddy of mine's at Kirkpatrick in Boston. Mm -hmm. yeah, his name is David. Yeah, I'm kind of just. 
He's an intellectual property. Coming to a stop. In fact, <laughs> can't just clear that out. Exactly. Oh, let's do this off the window. So we oh, yeah. try to get this deal. Right. And we use David to put the two, two properties together and to see how the overlap was. And he thought that we had a case, but my point is you go to the dump. Where is this gone after? Is Jay supposed to be coming to try? Just stupid. So. <clears throat> but that's an interesting business that we're going through today. I, I was fascinated with the approach that he used in terms of working on the commercial property. That existed. And I must have broken that down fast. I must have did such interesting. I'd like to call to order the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for October 24, 2006. We have a full uh, panel tonight, which is good to see. First thing I'd like to do is introduce our newest member, Mail Weatherby. Mail, thanks for joining us. Um, and the first order of business tonight is to approve the minutes of the June 27th meeting, but just to give a precursor to what's to come after that, we have two applications on tonight, one for Mary and Paul Godfrey, and the second for Catherine and Greg Miller. And then we just have some communication issues uh, for the panel to discuss after that, so a relatively short agenda. So uh, with that said, what I'd like to do is go back to the minutes of the June 27th meeting and see if anyone has any comments or questions about those uh, minutes and of course Mal, since you were not here at that meeting, um, you of course would recuse yourself from the vote on that. Any yeah, comments, I, questions? I was, I was here and it shows me as absent. Okay. I think that was the night Lori watched from home. Was that, that the night you watched from home on TV? She was just picking up my granddaughter. Oh, okay. Any other comments? <clears throat> Could I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Minutes of June 27th are approved. Moving over to um, the first application tonight, we have the request of Mary and Paul Godfrey of 11 Algonquin Road, tax map U12, lot 106, for a left side variance of 15 feet from the required 25 foot, um, from the required 25 feet for a 20 by 20 addition and a left sideline variance of five feet from the required 15 feet for a 10 by 20 deck. Um, the applicants have submitted to the um, board a binder request for variance. Everybody should have a copy of that. Um, and with that said, I invite the applicant to the uh, podium to present their application. Uh, 
Um, Len, and I just, I just want to say I know that Godfrey's from church, and I, I'm going to recuse myself from this application. Okay. Thank you very much. Chairman, while they're getting their uh, materials, uh, for the record, would would you kindly state the reason and purpose for your uh, stepping down from this agenda, just for the record, please? Yeah, I I know the Godfrey's from church, and I wouldn't feel comfortable voting against the application. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, Bruce, do you have any comments regarding, uh, I know we discussed it in the past, uh, the basis and reasoning or justification, valid justifications for stepping down. Would you please comment? After the decision, they can't render a decision properly because if I had stepped down, I would have been the decision to do it's mandatory if there's a financial interest, but then beyond that, there's the person's own feelings of prejudice that if they've been pre they're prejudiced one way or the other that, and they can't render an unbiased decision, then, um, yeah. For the variance. Very good. Thank you. Go ahead. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the zoning board. Um, my name is Paul Godfrey. I'd like to introduce my wife, Mary. Uh, son Adam, and dog, Mariana. Um, we are here this evening to uh, request a variance from the zoning board. Um, we live at 11 Algonquin Road in Shore Acres. Um, we have lived at this address for seven years, and in total, we've been the town of Cape Elizabeth for about 10 years. Uh, we very much appreciate you folks allowing us to uh, present our request this evening. Um, the variance we are, we are requesting tonight is different than what is on your agenda, so I'd like to just set that point straight. Um, we are requesting a variance to maintain our existing 10-foot side setback um, to construct a 20-foot by 20-foot addition and to construct a 20 foot by 10 foot deck. I believe the uh, binder that you have uh, appropriately uh, identifies that setback request. Um, all the other setbacks on our property, uh, both existing and, and with the proposed addition, meet the current setbacks of the, uh, of the, of the ordinance. As I said, um, we live at 11 Algonquin Road, Shore Acres. Uh, these pictures are, are, are in your binder. Um, on uh, map 12, lot 106 uh, of, of the town records. We are in an RA district. Uh, our lot is, a, is an existing non-conforming lot, uh, approximately 0.41 acres in size. Um, the proposed addition that we, are, that, 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 that we are seeking variance for, which is behind tab number three in, in your binder, as I stated, is a 20 by 20 addition. Uh, it would also include a 20 foot by 10 foot deck. Um, the proposed addition is uh, to replace the existing dining room, uh, which is uh, being eliminated uh, to accommodate a larger updated kitchen. Uh, direct your attention to this plan here, which again is, is, is also in your binder. Um, the area in blue uh, is, the, is our existing structure. Our existing structure. This in green is the proposed addition, and this in orange is the proposed deck. 
The reason we have building this addition, the reason why we have before you this evening, um, this is a financial need for our family, uh, for the opportunity from Mary to expand her existing private chef business. Uh, basically, we need a larger kitchen to accommodate uh, Mary's desire to expand her business uh, and to be able to achieve a higher volume of cooking. Uh, Mary is a private chef today, uh, but currently is, is primarily a stay-at-home mom. Now that both children are in school, uh, we are looking for an opportunity uh, to be able to expand her business and be able to do this by enlarging the kitchen. Uh, um, we have reviewed options with uh, builders and with a kitchen designer. Uh, we believe the only feasible option, the option we are presenting you for this evening, is to locate the addition that is shown on this plan uh, immediately adjacent to the area that, that is the existing kitchen and, and, and dining room. Um, the addition, for our purposes, would then be to provide area for a dining room slash family room. So again, just uh, moving the dining room out of this area and placing it in here and also having some area for a for, for family room. We completed the, uh, the application um, that's behind tab number two. I'll just briefly highlight uh, the need for the variance on uh, the reach of the points. Uh, the need for the variance, uh, again, is, is due to the placement of the existing structure. The existing structure is approximately 10 feet off the, uh, of our side lot line. Um, the changes in the zoning ordinance as it has, that has occurred since the time of construction. The existing home layout, and by that I mean uh, the existing kitchen and dining room are in this corner of the structure. Um, uh, and the existing property topography, and I, I will cover that more in, in a moment. Um, we also believe the granting of the variance will not uh, produce an undesirable change. Um, Again, uh, our neighborhood is made up of, of, of homes, many of which have, have additions. Uh, we do not see this affecting the market value of, of, of any of our uh, neighbors negatively. Uh, uh, and the proposed uh, addition would not block any established views. Um, another point, uh, the practical difficulty is not the result of any action by the applicant or prior owner. Uh, again, uh, no, we've owned this home for seven years. Uh, none of this is by a prior action of us. Uh, as I've stated earlier, no other feasible alternative is available. Um, we have evaluated other options, uh, but, but again, because of the existing layout of the home, uh, existing topography, uh, we do not believe uh, that there is any other feasible alternative available. Uh, and finally, uh, as the last point in the application requires, we do not believe there's any uh, adverse effect on, on the natural environment. To support our request and to support our, our, our claim that we believe this is the only uh, feasible alternative, um, again, as we understand, this is to be an extension of the kitchen into a dining room. Uh, because of the location of the existing kitchen and dining room in this corner, the existing property line runs here. It's also noted in the picture, which is included in your application. You can see the abrupt, approximate location of the property line. Again, it's roughly 10 feet from the edge of the house. This is the most logical uh, extension of the home in, in order to replace the existing dining room. Um, in order for this to be uh, financially feasible for us, um, we are looking to have access to the new um, addition through the existing uh, sliding glass doors. That's also shown in the pictures that you have. Uh, we, don't, we don't need to install any beams. We don't need to cut any holes in the home. We're fortunate that that sliding glass door is there, there today because that is what we propose to be our access into the new addition. Um, the addition for an, from an aesthetic purpose would match the existing roof line. We have a hip roof. It's hip on all four sides. Um, this would allow us to tie into the existing roof, roof line to, to maintain aesthetics. Property topography. Um, if you've had a chance to look at our site, or if not, we have pictures again in the binder. Um, pretty much at the back of our existing deck, uh, the, the property begins to go up a hill. Um, we are proposing this addition again because it, it also will allow us to maximize the little bit of backyard that we have behind the house. Um, if we were to locate this addition some other place behind the house, it would essentially bifurcate the backyard. We'd end up with an area back here that 
would all fall into the purposes would be very difficult to access. Um, it would, you'd have to go up and around the hill to get to this area, be an area that we feel would not, we would not use hardly at all, simply because it would be sort of off all by itself and in, in behind the home. Um, if we were to relocate, again, as I say, if we were to, re were to relocate this to meet the setback requirements, uh, it would likely require some location of interior walls. That's very costly. Uh, it's something I, I, I'm, I'm sure we cannot afford to do. Uh, it would block off the window in the, in the existing bathroom. Um, again, that's something that would be a, a, a design challenge for us if we were to have to slide that to be able to accommodate the setback requirements. We've also done some preliminary foundation investigation. As you might expect in Cape Elizabeth, our lot has ledge. Uh, but in doing some preliminary investigation in this corner here, uh, I'm fairly certain that the foundation can go in without hitting ledge. From a financial standpoint, that's a very strong advantage to us. Uh, located on the other side of the home near the driveway, there is exposed ledge. Uh, my opinion is, is that ledge is going to be uh, more likely to be present in this area over here than it is uh, with the investigation that I've done for this area over here. Um, and finally, uh, again, we, we, we believe, just because of the thought and, and time and preparation we put into this, that we believe this is the best match for our home and our site. Uh, again, given the existing layout of the home interior, uh, how this blends into the hill, um, we, ju we just, again, with the, with the different alternatives that we've, that we've looked at, we believe this is the, the best match for our home. Mr. Godfrey? Yes. Um, one of the requirements is that there be a showing of um, practical difficulty. Part of that definition is that uh, is the definition of significant economic injury. Are you familiar with that? Yep. And it, it basically is defined as placing the applicant for a variance at a disadvantage in the neighborhood by applying the zoning ordinance standards which would prevent the applicant from having a structure or accessory structure comparable in size, location, and number to those of other lot owners in the immediate neighborhood, but in no case fewer than 10 of the nearest property owners. Do you, meet, do you know if you meet that test? If your question, Mr. Chair, is could we afford this if we had to relocate? Is, is your question is it? No. Okay. No. My question is, you do have a chart in here which yeah. shows the side setbacks for the various other property owners. Yep. Another, yep. And basically, um, you have to show that, um, as I understand it, that in no fewer than 10 of the nearest property, that, that on average, um, your nonconformance is um, um, no more nonconforming than the average of the 10 nearest houses to your property. And I can't really tell from this chart whether or not you meet that test or not. And I, I, and I will move on to that, Mr. Chair. Behind tab four, is if we have done a comparison. Uh, we did 18, we did a comparison of 18 homes in the neighborhood. Um, turn this around. This is, this is an existing area. Why 18? Well, we simply started at our home and we went on one and just worked our way around the neighborhood. Um, what we found, Mr. Chair, and the rest of the members of the board, was we found that 13 out of the 18 homes we identified had setbacks which did not meet current zoning uh, requirements. Um, 11 out of those 13 were side setbacks. Um, I may have not numbered yours in the, in, in, in the book correctly, but rest assured the information as it relates to the home is correct. I may have misnumbered it on your map. Um, check to make sure that I got it on this map correctly. But again, as we went through, we did identify that 13 out of the 18 that we identified, that we, that we looked at, also had side, also had setbacks which did not meet current zoning requirements. And of the side setbacks, how many of those were uh, non-conforming of the 18? 11 out of the 18, Mr. Chair. We also, in terms of surveying the neighborhood, we also learned, and uh, not a surprise to us, but never documented, we are the smallest snow home in the neighborhood. If you look at the chart, we are the smallest home uh, of all the other ones in the neighborhood. Um, I don't know if that's any relevant, it's just information that, that, that we pass along for your, for your consideration. 
as I stated earlier, this, this has been, this endeavor for us has been not, not without a great deal of discussion with our neighbors. One of the things we absolutely wanted to make sure was that our neighbors understood what we were doing uh, and wanted to make sure that they were okay with what we were doing. Uh, in, your, in your binder, again, behind um, uh, tab, tab number four, I believe. Let me make sure I got the right tab. Um, behind tab number four, you'll find a list of signatures from our neighbors. Uh, most importantly, each of the neighbors whose property physically touches our property, uh, Corey and Lee Cool, uh, Corey, uh, Corey Cool and Lee Jacobson, um, Larry and Janet Amberger, uh, the Freemans and the Lukowskis, uh, all of our budding property neighbors have all signed this and have all indicated their support. And again, we have the, we we made sure we did our due diligence. Our neighborship is a lot more important than the addition, and we wanted to make sure that they were comfortable with that. Um, that's our summary of our, of our reasons why we're here today resting, uh, requesting this variance. Um, we'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. I had one other question, which was, um, <laughs> and I don't know if um, this would be a home occupation or a home business, but um, I just give you a I've, I'm sure you're probably aware of this, but for home businesses or home occupations, you need to submit an application to the uh, CEO uh, for that process. We are absolutely aware. Bruce has made us aware of that. We're, we're viewing this as a step-by-step -step process. Assuming this step moves forward, that would be our next step. Mary has already uh, obtained insurance to do the business that she's doing. We'll be applying with the state again, assuming we continue to, pro to progress along. Very good. Just a point of clarification, not that it makes a lot of difference, but significant economic injury based on the majority of the police in the area can have the people with less, less than 10 pounds. The average comes into play in another section of the community on the application. But. So, uh, could you just repeat that again for everybody's benefit? It would make the, the significant economic injury would, would be based on being able to prove that, 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 that the majority of at least the nearest 10, you can go by, but are, are at the same setback or less. So you don't have to average it out. Okay. I don't think it makes a difference either way here, but. <clears throat> majority as opposed to average. Okay. Any questions, comments? Uh, back to the point that you raised, Mr. Chairman, regarding that, that issue, the significant economic injury of which uh, we have traditionally based uh, a variance of this type upon, as, as stated by the ordinance. Uh, according to the chart that you, table that you uh, gave to us, you listed 17, 18 properties, one of which was yours. Uh, we, when we look at uh, variances, we look at sideline to sideline. When we're when you are requesting a sideline variance, we do not address front or rear variances. Those are those are a different category. We do not distinguish between left or right sideline. But we, uh, from a look and feel of the neighborhood, a sideline is a sideline, and that is different from front and back from a look and feel standpoint. And that's how the ordinance addresses it. And that's how we've interpreted it in the past. So looking at your table of 18 properties will eliminate <laughs> yours, which is number one. But looking down the two, and you have a uh, very descriptive table. And, and thank you for providing that information. But uh, And you have the four columns, front, rear, side, and side. We'll ignore the front and rear for the case of your variance, this, since it is a sideline. Looking at the two sidelines, uh, property number five, uh, your, your variance is, is within 10 feet of the sideline. So that's all we're looking at is, is from the uh, neighborhood uh, flavor of the neighborhood. Uh, we are looking at comparable properties of equal to your variance or less than. And in your case, you're, at, you're building 10 feet from the sideline. Uh, going down the list, property number five, 
meets the criteria, property number 8 meets the criteria, property number 13 meets the criteria, property number 15, and number 17, if I'm reading your table correctly. So that's five properties, and you have listed 17 in addition to yours. Uh, as Mr. Smith stated earlier, we've typically interpreted this as uh, uh, the ordinance as a majority of the nearest 10 properties. Uh, you meet the criteria on five out of 17, so that is certainly not at the, in the majority. Uh, uh, not and not quite approaching even the halfway uh, of that. So could you, and you stated earlier 11 and, and an even greater number, could you justify your 11 and whatever versus the table which shows five out of 17, please? My statement, and I'd be happy to clarify, my statement was relative to the number that do not meet the current side setback requirements. So in this case, it would have been the number that do not meet 25 feet. That is where the original foot, where 13 came from, which included both the front and rear. But if we simply look at side setback, we identified 11 out of 18, um, including our home, that did not meet the 25 foot side setback requirement. Okay, now I, I see five. Where are the other six from? Please? We look at property number two, where the side setback. It's using 25, isn't it? Using 25 as the number. That, that, that is what, correct. We, you're saying number two? <laughs> number two has a side setback. But, but that, that is not, 22 feet is, yes, less than 25, but it's not 10. And that's what we look at is 10. OK, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm now understanding this. I was gathering information, summarizing information based on my understanding that we were looking to identify side setbacks that did not meet current requirements. That was how we phrase and base, base my statement. The, uh, I guess the question could be, although if there's only five, that's even not a majority of 10, but um, you know, the, the statute talks about the 10 nearest yep. properties. So it might be helpful to know which of these properties are the 10 that are the nearest to your property. And to further my, before we change to that, Topic. Uh, Mr. Smith, am I correct in what I stated? Yes. Thank you. In my interpretation of the 10 feet. So we're looking for 10 <laughs> feet or less encroachments on the sideline to match yours. Is, is, and I hope that's clear. And, and that's fine. So if, if, I may, if I may ask a clarifying question of either the chair or Mr. Smith, therefore, if, if somebody is the absolute closest to a side setback, um, they are in a very tough position to request a variance. Is that, is that, is that generally the case? Yeah. Okay. That's a strong one. I don't think I'm going to clarify. Um, Mr. Chair, would you like me to go through and see if I can identify the 10 properties now? Or would you like I think it would be helpful, yes. Yeah. Okay. And while you're doing that, I have a question for um, Mr. Smith. The application is not looking to move the, the building any closer to the line. It's just going out back. Um, so is that still fit within the requirement for the variance since it's not getting any closer to the line? It's still the same criteria. Yeah. Uh, you Expanding the building. Um, within, outside, of, outside of the building. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Chair, if I may, if everybody would look back at the table, the, the 10 properties that I'm initially identifying as the closest properties to R would be property 2, property 3, property 8, property 9, property 10, property 11, property 12, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 8. And then add property um, 18 
Sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. So I've probably got one, two, there are too many now. There, there would be eleven. Uh, so I can probably take away property eighteen. And why eighteen? Uh, it seems to me setback. As does number three, and I believe you mentioned that earlier. I, I did. I did identify number three as being the closest one. It's either it's either eighteen or thirteen, and one of them at the table probably. 18 is closer than 13. So to, re to recap the 10 closest, 2, 3, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 16, 17, and 18. Okay, again, why 18? Uh, I'm taking my best guess at estimating distance from this in the map that I have. I have not had a chance to measure the closest properties of 10, not understanding that requirement. Are you are you using the figures on your table? That you yes, have? yes, sir, I am. Okay, because it says 25 feet, 75, 75, and 30, if you look at all four sides. I'm just simply identifying the 10 properties that are, that, are, that are the closest. You're identifying the 10 closest. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yep. Yep. So with those 10 that you've identified, it looks like you have number eight that has nonconformity as great as yours. Um, six, uh, 17. And I believe that's it, Mr. Chair. That's it, just those two. And nine, 10 and 11 were nonconforming, but not by the same. Right, not by the same degree. Other questions? Do, do you see, you, you understand our concern here? I now, I, I now have a better understanding, yes. Mr. Chair, if I may, Mr. Godfrey, just a, a point of clarification. The reason why the public notice says a 15-foot variance is because the, uh, precisely because your lot's non-conforming, any change outside of the original building envelope, okay, so even though it's going to have the same external border, the ordinance also tells us a lot can't be, become any more non-conforming just because it was non-conforming. So from the Ordinance point of view, it's actually worded correctly. It's it's a 15 foot extension from 25. Just wanted to explain Thank you. that. My misunderstanding. Mr. Godfrey, I see that a number of your neighbors have signed off on that proposed variance. Has the neighbor to the left side of your house done so? Yes. Corey, uh, Corey Poole and Lee Jacobson. And is there anyone behind you that directly sees this development, or are the hills in the way? I take it. Uh, the hill very much buffers the properties to the back, but the Freemans and the Liquids have also taken a look at that and have signed, have signed their support for, the, for this addition. The, um, the significant economic injury test, which requires you to show that a majority of the houses, the 10 closest, are more non-conforming than yours, your proposed variance cre creates a problem for us, and uh, I just alert you to that, and I don't know what, if anything, um, can be done in the way of additional data, or if you want to take time to study your chart or anything else. Um, if I may ask, Mr. Chair, how does the question of financial feasibility play into the, the, play into the decision? Because it absolutely plays into lots. 
financial feasibility as far as that it's the only financially feasible place to put it? Yes. Um, we have to have make a finding that each of the standards are met. And that particular standard, as I understand it, and I'm sure Mr. Smith or Mr. Chapman will correct me if I'm wrong, but that's one of the standards that has to be met is to show significant economic injury, which basically is defined as showing that the majority uh, of the 10 closest homes are more non-conforming than your proposed variance. So that, so that has, so again, to make sure I'm clear, that has nothing to do with the actual economics of us affording an addition in one location versus affording an addition in another location. That's right, that's right. The idea behind the statute is that if the strict application of the setback would put you at a uh, significant economic injury in relation to your neighbors, then uh, you're entitled to the variance. And the idea is that if the average of the neighborhood is setbacks of five feet, then it would be unfair to you to have you um, have to stay at 25 feet. And so the idea is that um, is sort of an averaging one so that the neighborhood has some uniformity and some consistency to it. So the idea is not to allow it to get more and more, to allow variances to pull the neighborhood into a more non-conforming position than it already is. But if it's already on average or a majority already more non-conforming than your proposed variance, then it allows it. Any other questions? Hmm. Comments? <clears throat> I also, uh, if I may, I have some, when it rains it pours, I have some, some concerns over the uh, initial uh, justification, which is the need for variances due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. Um, looking at the same data, I counted 12 out of the eight. If you look at purely side setbacks and, and not be, not look at the least, but just which ones are 25 or greater, there's 12 out of the 18, um, which makes me, give me a flavor that that's what the neighborhood is. And that, I, I guess I have a little trouble with, with uh, is there anything super unique about your particular property that's different from the rest of the neighborhood? And I guess there's, there's two issues that, come to my mind that I'm trying to balance and make a square fit into a circle, but I'm having a little trouble doing that. I'm just a point of clarification, I'm not sure it's, a, it's got to do with the placement of the structure on the lot, the placement on the structure, of the structure on the lot is existing, or any additions based on things such as ledge, topography, <coughs> pine trees, and the, the, they can't come down. Those things, unique meaning, gotcha. really is another place. Right. Thank you. Uh, again, I, I think it's very important that you understand the intent of the ordinance for your for your own well-being regarding this, and and uh, <laughs> there in in this situation the, the interpretation of the ordinance is, is quite objective and and we it, it states clearly what it's looking at and it and we just have to look at the numbers to interpret that and and again I want to go back to what the ordinance defines as significant economic injury and and this this is is, is somewhat a difficult concept for I think everybody to understand and put in perspective with with regard to their their house and and what it means and i'd like to read the ordinance again or the definition significant economic injury is defined as placing the applicant for variance at a disadvantage in the neighborhood by applying zoning ordinance standards which would prevent the applicant from having a structure your your dwelling or your addition a structure or accessory structure which doesn't apply to you uh, comparable in size location and number to those of other lot owners in the immediate neighborhood but in no case or than in no case fewer than 10 of the nearest property owner. Uh, 
what that means is, and, and that doesn't, that means if, if six of the nearest 10 houses have, have built within 10 feet of their property sidelines, then you have every right to join in with them because that's the flavor of the neighborhood. That doesn't mean that if six of the nearest 10 instead of being 25 feet as required by the ordinance, they're 24 feet, so therefore they've, they've breached the ordinance or, or violated the ordinance, so that gives everybody a, a, a wild card to build inside that 25-foot setback. That's not what it means. It's, it's, and I keep referring to the look and feel of the neighborhood is the intent of, the, of this ordinance. And it's saying, and there are many neighborhoods that are in this situation where the houses are kind of built on top of each other and real close, and that's the, the flavor of the neighborhood back in the 40s and 50s and, and different neighborhoods when they had small lots and, and houses. And so, again, what this means is that you would not be causing an undesirable change in the neighborhood, as, as stated in the ordinance, if you built an addition within 10 feet of the property sideline if six of the nearest 10 houses were also within 10 feet of the property sideline. And if that criteria is met, and it has been met a number of times since I've been sitting on the board, so it's not unusual to have neighborhoods that, uh, of that type of situation. So if six of the nearest 10 houses uh, or within 10 feet, then you have every right to do that. And if, if that number were 15, then we would look at 15 to the sideline. It's not, it's not any encroachment on the 25 feet. It's the absolute number of yours compared to the nearest 10. And, and that's what we make every, <coughs> excuse me, every effort to see if that data is present, then we don't have a problem with that. Uh, uh, part of the ordinance at all. And, and we, are, we are looking to see if there's any way you can meet that. And, and that's, that's why we are continuing to ask about your table. If there's any way you can meet that, then we're happy to approve that portion of the ordinance. Okay. And that's why I, I point out to you, um, based upon the data you've showed us so far, uh, based upon that objective test, it doesn't look like it would meet the test. So. It's your option today. I mean, we can proceed and vote on your application today, or if you, you also have the right to um, table your application for today to give it further study if you want. And may, may I ask a couple of additional questions? Sure. sure. Um, again, I will I apologize for not being completely up to speed. Do, I need, do we need to meet either the practical difficulty or the significant economic injury Clause is, is that is, is it one or the other or is, is it both? It's both, is my understanding. It, 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 <coughs> yeah. Thank you. And again, just just for clarification, because we aren't actually moving because we're not actually getting any closer, it's still it's the same condition because we're already non-conforming. You're non-conforming and you're expanding the amount of non-conformity by expanding back along the 10-foot line. If you moved over to 25 feet and went back, it would be fine. Or the other thing you could look at is there are a number of other properties. For instance, you have um, property nine, which is at 18 feet. Um, number eight is at 12 feet. Although I guess eight, uh, both of those, I guess, are among the 10 closest. You know, I guess the question is, can you get a majority by moving over the the um, the extension to 18 or 20 feet. And I'm not sure you still get there because even, you know, with, uh, it's got to be the 10 close, you got to have a majority of the 10 closest. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, you can't go to 20. It really has to be all encompassing. 10 is the minimum. 10 is the minimum. Okay, you can, you can go to more properties. You can inventory. Yeah, you could, in okay, that's a good point. You could inventory 20 or 30 properties. Okay. And if you can establish a majority by going more. I would assume there's some limit to how far you can't do the whole town. You know, usually, usually people either do a circumference of more than 10 or, or a 
office and up. It's all they do in the neighborhood, but it really needs to be the neighborhood in its entirety. It can't be just on one side of the street. So yeah. It really should include If you're going to go up and down the street, it should be both sides. It should be both sides of the street. <clears throat> we just, we just have to yeah. And understood that we just had to look at the adjacent properties, assuming that was all. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it does mm -hmm. absolutely. If you go across the street, yeah, and it, the point is, you can't pick and choose. Uh, no, no, you no, you no. have to literally draw a circumference from the center of your lot and 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 <laughs> involve all the houses as you expand. So. Typically, that includes the houses across the street, and I noticed on your table you didn't include any across your street. And again, just understanding what I originally thought was just the, the touching adjacent property. So again, I, I don't know if, if, if identifying ones across the street will help or hurt, but I suppose it's in our interest to, to evaluate that. Yeah, good. So is that an indication you'd like to table this for today? I'm trying to think if I have any more questions, Mr. Chair. Or, um, we can continue that you can withdraw it or you can continue you'd ask us to continue it to the next hearing whatever you prefer um i think that we'd like to have it continue to the next hearing if that would be possible mr chair we'll have additional put together additional materials yeah. any comment on that anybody have any objection to continue it? yeah i mean it's his right yeah it's your right to continue it so we will continue it to the next hearing. And if I ask, I ask Mr. Smith, what would be the deadline for getting new materials before the board? Second Tuesday of next month. Okay. So somewhere about the 14th or not. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? I, anybody else have any major concerns with the application that they might want to? They are put on the table at this time. Probably just to put this out there, the question, of course, the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. And would we consider the fact that the reason for this request of variance is the expansion of a home-based business? Would that fall under the guise of this is the result of an action taken by the applicant? I think so. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think they're two separate issues. Okay. Very good. Thank you for your time, and Thank you for your time. hopefully we'll see you next month. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'm sorry? They continued it. They continued it to the next hearing. Tabled it, continued. So the Godfrey application is continued or tabled to the next hearing. Which puts us on course for our next application to hear the appeal of Catherine and Greg Miller. 7 Crescent View Avenue, tax map U16, lot 63, for a left sideline variance of 5 feet 6 inches from the required 25 feet to allow an existing farm porch and second floor addition to remain at 19, 19 feet 6 inches from said property line. Before we get into the uh, substance of the application, I do want to note for the record that um, Ms. Miller is uh, an attorney practicing law who I know uh, very well from her work with the Bar Association and my work with the Bar Association. I personally don't think that uh, it's professional uh, endeavors that we know each other from, and I don't personally feel that it would prejudice, uh, that that relationship would prejudice my ability to be objective in this particular application, but I put it out there for the applicant. If the applicant has any concerns or questions about that, I'm happy to. I am very comfortable with you hearing this and, and making a decision. Thank you for the disclosure. My pleasure. So with that said. Sorry, I, I'm going to recuse myself as well for the same reasons as the last application. Okay. And that being that you don't feel you can uh, render an unbiased decision? Correct. Okay. As opposed to financial interest. Very good. 
All right, with that said, if the applicant would like to present your application, please. I was before this board five years ago when my husband and I decided to put an addition on the property. We sought to put a second floor on the addition, um, on our existing structure, and to do that, we needed the two foot variance. And as diligent applicants, we got a Class A mortgage survey, which told us that our property line was 20, or setback was 23 feet from the left setback, the left side setback was 23 feet. So we were relying on that, and we got our variance, our two foot variance, we filed it with registry of deeds, recorded it, and lo and behold, five years later, here we are to learn that the mortgage survey that we had done five years ago was inaccurate. And what had happened is the fence that is adjacent to our property isn't on the property line. It's actually two feet before the property line. So our Class A survey is based on the fence meeting the property line. What also was a factor in it is we are a corner lot that's rounded, and because it's rounded, we now learned in the second survey that part of our property is under the asphalt because of the rounding of the, the nature of the drive um, road. Our lot you see on U16 is a square lot in most lots. Unfortunately, the road, though, is a round corner. So I think what's going to happen with our survey, and talking about the current survey, is first survey that was done, I didn't realize that our property started under the asphalt. And so it went from the grass line down to the fence, and that's where we got off the feet. I'm surmising, but I, I needed to try to figure out how the first survey could be wrong. In doing that, we now learned that we really needed a four and a half foot variance, as opposed to the two foot variance that we came before and went together. So I'm here today to just to ask for an amended variance. Um, the house has already been built. The footprint hasn't been increased. It's just gone up. But the variance on record at the Cumberland County Register of is a two-foot variance. And according to the new survey that we had completed, we really needed a four-and-a-half-foot variance. Looking at the standard, um, we met the standard in 2000 when we or 2001, when we originally proposed this addition. Um, the, the variance was requested then and it's requested now um, because the property is a corner lot and the house is uniquely placed in, to maximize road space, 75 feet on one side. Um, a side set, one side setback has a 75 foot and the other one is now is learning 19 and a half feet. It's a unique placement because of the corner. Um, the adjacent lot that we're talking about is, is an undeveloped lot. It's fenced in. The fence has been there over 20 years. Um, and everybody, including the neighbors, um, really just assumed that that was the boundary again. Um, so we did rely on accurate information when we came here. We spoke with neighbors. We looked for the pin. And we had the class survey. Unfortunately, that information was inaccurate. But again, that was the best available information to us at the time. So in looking at our application, we believe the first standard is in that, in that variance is due to the unique circumstances of this property. Second, the granting this variance would not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. Not, it, would be, it would not unreasonably detriment the effect of the marketing value. This property, we again, has been built. Um, we increased the, the house. Uh, I think we improved the house. You can see it before and after pictures in the file. Um, the neighbors were generally pleased. They supported the application wholeheartedly in 2001. We've subsequently spoken to them about the, the um, miscalculation um, and the need for a larger variance. But again, the house isn't changing, and they're pleased with the house then. They're still pleased with the house now. Um, and I think that it would not, it, it has no desire, it has no change to the circumstance in the neighborhood. So, I believe that the second standard has been that. Third, the practical difficulty was not taken by the action of the applicant. In this one, we didn't place the house, we didn't increase the, the non-conforming value, increasing the footprint or increasing the um, encum encroachment on the side, etc. We kept the house where it was, we simply went up. The reason for this amended variance, again, is, is really because we relied on a survey of information. 
Um, and I'm here before you to tell you that it was the best information we had, we relied on in good faith, but it simply wasn't accurate. And I'm here to correct that. We're not selling the property, we're not moving, but I know that it needs to be corrected. So I'm here to correct that. No work is going to be changed, no proposed um, construction will be built. So again, we're not taking any further action We're trying to correct something that was intended back then. There really is no feasible alternative to this amended variance request. Um, short of destroying the house, um, we really just can't level off what we built um, without incurring substantial, significant economic harm. Um, it was a greater than $100,000 improvement. Um, we put it in to, to increase the value of the house to stay there, to increase the, the, um, the, surrounding, the surrounding area and improve the house. And we did that with good intentions. And again, it's, um, it's, it's disheartening to realize that we relied on inaccurate information from a professional. And again, I urge you to consider that and realize that we really don't have an alternative. Ms. Miller, uh, could you address the significant economic injury test? Absolutely. Um, we have done, and you see in the package, you have a comparison of the neighboring property um, we have a unique block. It's Crescent View Avenue. It's, um, you can see from the map, 216. It's um, not quite a cul-de-sac. It's, it's, a, it's a road with no through road. Um, we have gone through the 22 neighboring properties and looked at the front setback as well as the side setback. As you see, we're the third down old 7 Crescent View Avenue. Our property, at that point, we thought this was the original submission was 75 and 23 feet. We now learn that's approximately 19 and a half feet. Looking at our neighbor though, um, where we are surrounded by homes that don't have uh, at least 19 feet. For instance, our neighbor is 10 feet and 13 feet. Um, right next door is 18 feet. Um, moving down the block, we have 20 feet. I'm reading the lowest setbacks. 20 feet, 22 feet, 10 feet, 8 feet, 5 feet, 10 feet, 12 feet, 5 feet, 14, 10, 15, 17, 17, 16, 15, 15, and, 12, and 17 is one more that was added. Um, the, the neighborhood was built in the 1950s. The properties do not have conforming side setbacks. I think um, there, there are clearly six Crescent View is um, 25 feet as a side setback. And, I, and as I'm sitting here, I'm thinking that that may not include the garage, because I think that the garage is even closer. But there are, there are very few properties that have 25 feet. It's small, they're all less than a third of an acre. I think you have one of the larger lots on the street. Um, and in most towns, um, unfortunately, don't have the excess land. Any questions or comments for the applicant? You originally had a mortgage survey done, and you discovered the error this year. Do you have it to verify that? Did you have another mortgage survey, or do you have a standard boundary survey done? We had um, a, a different mortgage survey done but it was much more thorough. It wasn't a full instrument survey, but in performing the survey, he spent greater time, and because of the discrepancy, he was even concerned when he came out again. Um, to, he is a full-fledged surveyor, so he could have done the, the next step. Um, this was a more expensive survey, and it, it, it did spend a greater amount of time. But it, it, it was a Class D survey. Yes. Yeah. Uh, did you include a copy of that in your package? There is. It's, um, there's three surveys in your package. Um, one is from Bruce Goodwin, which is the more up-to-date survey. The earlier survey was um, oh, the sign Herbert Gregg, um, and it was written on the top color survey with and without the addition. So I think you should have three surveys in your package. Right. Now, um, I have a question as, as it pertains to, are we sure that this document is in fact the correct one because it does have a notation on it 
that states it recommends a boundary survey to verify. I think, and that's what the second one was done. And that was the reason the second one was done? Yes. Okay. And again, the board doesn't require a full boundary survey. I think that that was something he's encouraging us to do. Um, and I think we should still do it, but I think it's not necessary. We're comfortable that he's, he's acting on his number, which is what we're putting before this board. I just need two surveys. Do you have a third in yours? Do you have three surveys in yours? I just have two. No. I have two, both by Herbert Gray. Two. two. Oh, I see it. It's up in under tab two. There you go. Tab two is the survey we're using. Yeah. That seems to show. Okay, I see 23 feet. 23 feet is, at, is where the variance would have taken you. Exactly. And you need two more feet, so you, go, you want to go to 21. Right. No, actually 19 and a half, I think. Because um, I think it's a little bit greater that, that the house isn't sitting straight within the, the lawn. I thought that the 19 and a half, well, we need four and a half feet to get us to the 19 and a half. So if you assume 19 feet, what are the numbers on your adjacent properties? How many of the adjacent properties? Well, I went through the list um, before, and the list that I went through, I listed anything below 19 feet. Okay. Um, and again, most properties, with the exception of very one or, one or two properties, have at least one side that is less than that amount. And again, this is the same information I, I submitted before the board um, back when I did it. I did the numbers when I was seeking off uh, only a couple of feet. These were the numbers. Yep. So again, I, I'm trying to stick with my original proposal. Any further questions for the applicant? It appears on your table of comparison properties that you included every house on Crescent View. Is that correct? Um, I did miss 33 Crescent View. And that one is 8 and 17 feet. And that was, I think, I was just pulling the closest one, but that is another house on the lot that I did notice tonight. And what was the reason you didn't include 30? I think it was just an open I think I might not have been, it might have been on a separate set of paper, but it, it's, it, um, it measured out anyway, so there was really no. For the benefit of our audience and for the records at home, I counted. is lot. Is 52. Yeah. Uh, for the benefit of the audience and home and the part of the records, I counted 24 properties in your list, one of which was yours. So there are 23 comparative pro comparison properties. And of those 23 properties, I counted 18 that had a sideline setback. Uh, of 19 and a half feet or less, which is what your property uh, ends up at, according to the current survey. So 18 of 23 properties in, in looking at only sideline setback certainly meets the uh, overwhelming majority of the neighborhood. And the houses are, it's a small neighborhood, the small houses, and they really pack them in there, I think, because of just the close proximity to the ocean, that kind of If, of 23, if, if you approached 
12 properties or less that met your setback request, then that would be a concern. Uh, you have 18 comparative of the nearest, and you have included virtually every house on that street, on that closed circle street. And so you, you do meet the, that objective criteria element of the standards quite well. Further comments, question for the applicant? Do you have anything else to add? No, I just, I guess I would ask that um, the application then be submitted and considered by motion. Very good, thank you. Is there one, anyone else in the audience that would like to speak in support of this application? Anyone that wants to speak in opposition to the application? <laughs> Neutral? Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, I would yes. like to point out one other uh, relevant element of this in that the, of every sideline and variance, there is a corner and an associated front variance involved. And, and in this situation, according to the survey, that front left corner is not the nearest front corner of the property. So there is no, by including the front left corner, uh, it, it does not exceed the closest point of the front setback of the property. I don't know if that's clear. No, I'm not sure I follow that. Uh, by moving the sideline, um, by requesting a sideline variance, we mm -hmm. also have to look at front and rear variance. Right. In her situation, her front variance is is uh, less than the ordinance requirement. Due to the positioning of the house on the lot, the front left corner is not the closest part of the front porch to the front sideline. It, it's the front right corner. Therefore, including the sideline variance in the setback, it does not in turn create a situation where the front is any closer to the front setback. And in which case, if it was, we would have to address the front setback also. But because of the position of the house on the lot. Because it runs parallel. It is not line. parallel to the front. It is canted clockwise <clears throat> as looking at the survey. And so the front right corner is already the closest corner to the front setback. So I think it's important that we make it clear for the records that we are not, by including, by granting the, the variance for the side setback amendment, we are not increasing the front, we are not increasing the front setback any whatsoever. It doesn't change the fact that you already granted a variance for the front setback. And That's correct. But if, if that was not the situation that I described, we could not just look at the side only. We would also have to look at the front because a corner involves the front as well as the side. I hope that's clear as mud. And again, we're not I understand it. Anything. I hope so. <laughs> There's no, we're not, I agree with what you said, Dr. Thompson. We're certainly not doing anything. This is just a kind of correct what we had hoped to have gotten right the first time. You don't think that was a very good job, <laughs> No, exactly. And we don't want to do any work, rather construction or destruction, I guess. That would, if the front, by including that front left corner, if it was closer or caused the front to be closer, then we could have a significant issue with that because then we would have to look at the front setbacks. But in this situation, it is not. So, uh, and I think that's an important distinction to be made in this unique situation. And I, I think that after we had highlighted this problem, we looked at it in a variety of ways, and um, I think that we were scrutinizing this section closely to make sure that there wasn't a problem, because obviously I would want to be correct with all the problems now. Sure. So the ordinance has been... Back in five years. Yes. The ordinance has been 
tightened significantly in the past five years, as you're aware of. Very good. Um, unless you have anything else, uh, we'll close the public aspect of the application and open it up for discussion among the panel. Any discussion? I'd, uh, well, first I'd like to thank you for a very clear application package. Um, to me, uh, over the past few years we've had discussions, and I think this might be for a work workshop in the future, but um, application requirements in terms of uh, drafting, and uh, my understanding is that even a, a free handed uh, map is sufficient, and it's, I wonder if we want to revisit whether we want to have more than a mortgage survey uh, for the future. I just, I just, but, but this is this is a case, and we have a couple of attorneys here. This house couldn't be sold. Well, that's that's. The I mean, problem. you talk about a tailspin. Sit at a closing when this comes up at the eleventh hour, and it can't be rectified. So, to some degree, you know, the council needs to probably recognize that while that may be a a bit of a cost, it would preclude this from coming up at some future date. I mean, that's My feeling is if it happens once, it can happen twice. Oh, I don't yeah. know what the frequency of error is in mortgage surveys. And I think there's a lot of folks, if they found that out, would say, I plan on being buried out of this house. I'm not going to, I mean, I wonder how many. Most people don't feel that way. I mean, most of the, the purchase and sales agreements allow three days to rectify yeah. the problem that surfaces from this survey. I mean, three days in this case would have had to go a full cycle for the zoning board to make its change and then whatever was required for working with the registry of deeds to get it done. So, and I don't I, think we could have done it. I mean, in this case, if yeah. we had to have it three days, um, the problem became aware, we became aware of the problem, I believe, in August, hmm. the end of August. In September, there was no, you, the board didn't sit. Right. So, I mean, we're now out 60 days, which has the problem, again, we're not selling this house, but it's something um, that we needed, we clarified with our mortgage company, we refinanced, and that's when the problem became apparent to us, and the bank was still comfortable, but it, it is a concern, and it, I can understand where people would need to get it right the first time. I would still the applicant that they really need to submit an accurate document, and that they will suffer the consequences should, should the accurate document not be accurate. But you're strongly encouraging. What's that? You're strongly encouraging. I strongly encourage. <laughs> okay. But as, as in the past, have you minimally required a mortgage survey? At least a mortgage survey. Yeah. So, so with it, by requiring a mortgage survey, you at least have a licensed professional stamp on a document. Yeah, but they don't like to be used for anything other than <laughs> right. what it's supposed to be used for. The right. No setback violations, so they, they don't like that. To minimally allow the applicant and the board to hang their hat on something. But I think that, you know, this does, this doesn't involve you. This is a, a side comment, but there's no saying if you have two watches, two clocks, and they show two different times, you never know what time it is. So, I mean, we now have two mortgage surveys, or an, an applicant has two mortgage surveys. 
uh, you almost need a tiebreaker at some point. So, I mean, I don't think that applies in this situation. Well, she's uh, but, she but she meets the price to go through. That shows you, that shows you the inaccuracy that can happen on the inspection plan. Yeah. And I tell you I mean, that that inaccuracy can exist, but but that's all we can require. That they can they proceed at their own risk. So, I mean, I'm well aware um, by the time I get to the doctor that, that they're taking that chance. One of the protections they often seek is title insurance. And many title carriers will cover those setback violations um, if you seek the proper endorsements for, for that. And the fact of the matter is the whole secondary market, the finance market, works on the mortgage loan inspections. So any further comments about this application? Any further discussion? Okay, with no further discussion, let's take the votes. Um, there are seven, excuse me, eight criteria that uh, must be met in order for the application of the Millers uh, to obtain a variance. Those are set forth in your packet. Um, and the first one is that the proposed variance is not a substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance. All in favor of that? Unanimous in favor. A literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical dif difficulty. All in favor. The need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general condition of the neighborhood. All in favor. The granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use of market value of abutting properties. All in favor. The practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. All in favor? Unanimous. No other feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner. All in favor? Unanimous. The granting of a variance will not un unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. All in favor? Unanimous. The property is now located in whole or in part within shoreland areas described in Title 38, Section 435. All in favor? Unanimous. So all the um, eight criteria have been met. Um, I would request a motion to approve the application and to make the findings that the applicants are the owners of the property at 7 Crescent View Road, tax map U16, lot 106, and the property is located in residential A district and contains 12,000 15 square feet of land area with 220.9 feet of street frontage and is therefore a non-conforming lot of record. Could I have a motion to approve that application? Second. Second. All in favor? The application of Catherine and Greg Miller for a variance from the strict application of section 196-1 of the zoning ordinance uh, having been, a hearing having been held. Um, the request to have a left side property line variance of 5 feet 6 inches from the required 25 feet to allow an existing farm porch and second floor addition to remain at 19 6 feet from said property line is approved. Thank you. We have um, just some communications that we want to talk about. Um, where are communication? The um, I would just like to make a request tonight, perfect attendance, thank you very much. Uh, now that it's cold outside, everybody's going to be more inclined to come to the meetings, and I encourage you to make all of them, um, because we've got nice warm lights in here and lots of friendly faces. So the next meeting is, does anyone have that date? 28th of November. Tuesday following Thanksgiving. Very good. You'll do a good job of pushing that off to January. Um, thoughts? Would people prefer to go a week earlier? That's a tough time, too. 
I think any time within the school vacation period is going to be difficult. Yeah. I don't think a week earlier is going to necessarily help um, because people are crazy just before the holiday. Well, unfortunately, because uh, the only time to be a problem is if somebody submitted an application the day after this meeting. Yeah. The 25th. We've got a lot of you guys. We've got a case within 30 days. Yeah. So we can't, if, we, if we kick it beyond that 30 uh, day window, <coughs> So the December meeting would be on the 26th, is that correct? Would fall on the 26th? I will definitely discourage. I probably can hear that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know that. So the week before would be the 19th. 19. Um, any preference among the board members? That seems to be the logical choice. 19th. Instead of the week mm -hmm. later. Is that all right with everyone? Uh, yeah, the week before would be a planning board meeting. Would be what? Planning board meeting. Yeah, board that night. So they have this room, right? So we can't do that. Keep it on the 26th and just trust the great judgment of Mr. Smith. Yeah. Why don't, why don't, you, why don't we wait until the next meeting? We know we're meeting. Okay. And I have a Sure. Let's do that. Very good. Any further business to come before the meeting? We have a motion to adjourn? So moved, sir. All in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you. Don't forget your new zoning ordinance. Everybody should have gotten one.